Unfortunately, our players are uh, a teensy bit off frame there from the camera, but... All right, Shaman sticking with the uh, the classic Ness. Oh, Shaman's uh, all one word. Three, two, one, oh, interesting. Go! Okay. All right. So game one here, Shaman versus Drago. Uh, sword characters, traditionally, to my understanding, something that Ness struggled with just a little bit. But Shaman, so far, you know, I've said that, but I've seen Shaman take some uh, some some sets off some pretty talented sword players. So. Maybe that's, uh, maybe my information there is outdated or just incorrect. Right now, Shaman's looking pretty confident, getting, uh, these conversions off, getting a lot of this, uh, pressure going. Caught with the, uh, spear, the impale there. There you go, trying to claw back on the stage here, find something. That back air is going to shove him right back out, though. Yo-Yo does not stop that upbeat, though. That'll power right through. There's, like, a very specific hitbox on that. That does get hit, and I think we just found it right there. That time the yo-yo did, in fact, work, but... I think part of it is the two-frame, too. The, the armor goes away during the two-frame animation. Oh, right up there for the back air, just throwing it out. Drago trying to find another one, throwing them out one after the other, but no connect so far. 124. So close to having the stock and evening the game up. Shaman taking their time on that offstage platform. That's something you got to be careful with with this new rule set. The moving, uh... Moving platforms, the stage has its on list that's uh, been floating around there for a while. We're trying that out this week. Uh, you know, a lot of folks have been... Uh, one of the things that they've not liked so much is that offstage iteration where that platform's way out there. But sometimes you just got to wait that out. Oh, catching the up air on the recovery as well. Sometimes you just got to wait that platform out. Let them sit out there until the platform starts coming back. If you start throwing stuff out there too early, then they get a pretty good chance to... Uh, just make a recovery or make it back to ledge for free. Damon finding another opening, trying to get those drag down up airs as well. No uh, chance to drag down for the grab there. Oh, Shaman, you know. That was definitely one of those trying to look for the uh, drag down into the grab there. <laughs> They're off stage. Didn't quite work out. Almost died to a uh, down smash and retaliation. Drago just drops the ledge to hit the counter. Gonna even those stocks up. It's uh, not looking so bad for Drago right now. It was looking a little rough a moment ago, but getting that definitely helped. Shaman putting a lot of range pressure up here. That PK fire is really keeping Drago in a in a box in the corner right now, and it's gonna be something that they're gonna need to solve. The impale on shield slowing down the match there for just a little bit, but there's just no options off of it at the moment. Oh, that backer gonna catch. Right over the forward smash, take that last stock. Shaman's going to take game one. Uh, I like, though, that Draco just kind of falling through the uh, the up B, the PK thunder pressure there. Not something that Korn needs to worry about all that much. You can just start spinning them swords around, man, and just just slide right through it all. So that's a uh, that's a neat little a neat little usage of the Korn tool set there. I'm actually going to go ahead and bring up my, uh, bring up the old chat here as well, just in case. As soon as I can remember how to get to it. Hey, there we go. All right, game two, Shaman switching over to Snake. So, interesting choice. Shaman did get the win game one. It was, uh, you know, down to last stock and close-ish, but... Maybe the snake is uh, just something that works a little better here, or maybe it's just the result of going to the triplot stage. You know, I could see where you could get comboed for quite a while and disadvantage if you're playing Ness on the stage. On the other hand, these grenades, boy, they get you out of a whole, whole lot. That's, uh, you know, it feels like Drago's been landing all the hits this game, you know, but like the damage is staying even because every one of those hits has come with a grenade trade that has kind of just equalized the damage out. Oh, the forward smash, though, just kind of poked that from way far away from all that grenade pressure. Don't even worry about it. Going way out, trying to find the back air onto that drone, but it's not quite going to hit. A little early on that lands, gets parried. Damon's got the timing down. Oh, the return of that drone actually set up Drago perfectly for that. And then just the full screen neutral be there. That orb actually, uh, I think they're called a grenade throw. That's not something you'd be thinking about from that distance, but... It did lock up just enough frames on Snake to cause that to kill, and now, you know, Drago sitting in a pretty powerful spot here. It definitely is seeming like the sword and the range that Corrin has is 
really mitigating. Oh, wow! That might have been some, uh, some sus DI there, but that turnaround off the parry into the up tilt. Big, uh, big move there to even this back up, and now Shaman's starting to find some of those, uh, snake combos. This forward air. Man, the forward air is, it leaves you super vulnerable, but you get caught by it. <laughs> you get hit by every single one of those kicks. That's a lot of damage. Explosions here, uh, Messing up Drago's flow on that combo just a little bit. There's so much on this ledge. Drago just gets up and counters and says, I'm not dealing with any of it. Forget all these explosions. I'm getting this hit. Not going to stop me. Just sliding around the pole there on that lance to make the hits, too. I mean, Drago's really got some interesting movement options here to deal with uh, deal with some of these snake tools. I mean, the way that they're just moving around and using the Corrin tool set to deal with it is... Very interesting, even as far as just, like, right here. Ledge trapping from, like, nearly the middle of the stage. Because why not? Because you don't want to get any closer and deal with uh, some of that other stuff. Oh, the mortar off stage went so low to hit. If that had hit higher up, Corn, uh, Dragon might just die for that. The roll, though, is going to uh, force a die right there, which means uh, now it's looking a little bit rougher for Drago. Now a stock behind instead of ahead. Catches the grab, though. It does mean that uh, Shaman's back out on the ledge here. She's trying to find a way back, dodging through those orbs this time. Not going to make that same mistake a second time. Up throw still not quite at a percentage where it's going to kill Snake, and Shaman's just hanging out up there, <laughs> dropping explosives and finding the right opportunity. Pays off, too, right back to the stage. I can definitely see where Shaman's starting to, in neutral, like move more into like the Snake close-range toolkit, the dash attacks to get in and looking for... Stuff like the back air because playing the range game so far just has not worked one good grab there drago gets the up throw gets the kill it does at least even the stocks up but yeah the range toolkit on snake here just does not seem to be paying off quite as much this corn just seems to have a lot of options to deal with a lot of that just holding a grenade on ledge like what do you do Grenade's about to go off, you know? Like, you know you can't deal with that. Another roll in on the ledge from the mortar and the grenade setup. Shaman once again ready with that timing on the up tilt. That's going to be the 2-0 set for Shaman. Corrin 